Island Family Affair. We, of course, had to get Gabrielle back to the show. And, uh, and that's, that's why we did it, actually. We had to wrap up also the fact that uh, the whole Dayhawk, Hope, Destroyer kind of storyline as well. So uh, that's the way we chose to do it. It was difficult, I must say. Family Affair came out of, an, I knew that we, at the end of the third season, you know, as we were headed into that, that we were going to have Hope, uh, you know, grown up looking like Gabrielle and that we were going to, um, you know, Gabrielle was going to sacrifice herself for Xena. And I had, I just had this one image of Xena walking into Gabrielle's parents' house and seeing Gabrielle sitting at the table with her family and Xena realizing that's not Gabrielle. But Herodotus, you heard my father. Leave Xena before somebody else gets hurt. Family Affair was an interesting episode in the sense I think it was the first time I did one of those episodes of either Hercules or Xena where I didn't actually have people fighting people. It was just uh, Xena and Gabrielle fighting the monster. I actually, it's a very, the, the setup for the story is very complicated, and I had been away from New Zealand for about three years since I had directed the Xena pilot and hadn't followed the show for a while. And when Liz Friedman, who is one of the producers on the show, called me up, uh, Liz, by the way, this was her original story. So she called me up and asked if I would direct it, and I was very flattered that she wanted me to do that. Uh, Liz was terrific. <laughs> <laughs> She'd never, to my knowledge at least, written an episode of television before, but the, the cool thing about Liz is it, she just had Xena in her soul. When she described the plot to me, I was kind of outraged. I said, what have you been doing to these characters? Gabrielle has a daughter who looks just like her, and her daughter has a, has a child that's a monster, so Gabrielle's a grandmother. It was, um, I was very concerned, but when I got the teleplay that was written by Chris Mannheim, I was really delighted. I was surprised that it was as engaging as it was. Chris was fantastic because I had come with this general notion of a story, but I had really, it was the first time I ever, I ever wrote anything, I mean, outside of, you know, high school. Um, and so she was great about letting me take a stab at stuff and then really helping me get through the through the hard part you know because after the initial flurry of inspiration then it's all pretty much misery from there on in um, and uh, and then and so we worked on this story together and then also when it came to script she was uh, generous enough to let me take a first crack at a few scenes and that was uh, those were the first scenes I ever wrote. I remember Renee and I when we were discussing how she was going to play Gabrielle when she reappeared in the episode. And I remember the word raw came up as just, she wanted to play it very raw. And that was sort of a word that just kind of clicked with her for that particular episode. Lucy wanted to really push her performance um, to the edge. I think she wanted to feel like losing Gabrielle or feeling responsible for the loss of Gabrielle had kind of driven her a little bit uh, little bit to the edge of, of uh, insanity. Uh, and that kind of persisted until Gabrielle came back into the story. That thing is the destroyer. And that means that the girl in the other room is not Gabrielle. It's hope. One of the most difficult challenges we had was trying to figure out how to get Gabrielle out of that lava and back on Earth. <laughs> I'm not sure it was totally successful. I watched the episode recently and I thought we kind of split the difference. When Hope was explaining how she had gotten out as Gabrielle to Xena, the story made sense and I wish we had stuck to that straight through for both characters. <clears throat> yeah, Gabrielle getting out of the lava pit was um, a source of considerable discussion, um, misery, uh, insult hurling, ridicule, um, because, you know, at the end of the season, we thought, wow, this will be really dramatic. We're going to throw her and hope into this, into the lava pit. 
Well, none of us ever thought about how we were going to get her out and what the explanation about how you dump somebody into a lava pit and then have them uh, be able to survive that. I should have known you'd survive. How could you? I didn't know that I was going to survive. Convincing the audience that, that it was really Gabrielle in the beginning when she's reintroduced in the marketplace um, was actually, I mean, the character of Hope is supposed to be very clever. So the thought was that Renee would just play the character like she was Gabrielle, and we wouldn't actually alter that until, well, really, uh, it wasn't until the middle of the attack in the barn when the monster first appeared and then we only hinted at it and we really didn't kind of start changing the way she would play the character until after it was revealed who she was. Gabrielle? Leave it! You're, you're alive! You're... and you're here! You're here! <laughs> the mother and son relationship between the destroyer and Hope is uh, that was that's another one of my favorite things about this episode is that I also from early on knew that <clears throat> I liked the idea of this creature who all he wants is to be embraced to be physically embraced by his mother. Hope's relationship with her son is a little problematic. I mean, first of all, it was impossible for him to get physically close to her without harming her. But secondly, I don't think Hope had a lot of love in her for anyone. I think Hope's agenda was her father, Dayhawk's agenda. And she was willing to use her son to accomplish it. And if it meant the death of her son, well, so be it, basically. Stop it. Stop! I think that Gabrielle having had a you know a, a very very close brush with death in you know when she went into the into the pit and then she says that she was in a hospice for a while so obviously she's had a long time to recover and to consider things and she's realized that she doesn't know exactly what she wants i think gabrielle appears lost at the end of the episode because she genuinely is i mean I think there's little doubt in her mind that she has successfully killed her daughter and her grandson, such as he was. Um, but that leaves her where, emotionally? I mean, she really, I don't believe Gabrielle understands what her life is about. She's not, certainly at this point, a warrior like Xena. She's someone who comes from heart. And I think she's having a problem reconciling the two and finding her way in the world. She knows that she cares about Xena and she knows that she that they she believes in the work they do but i think she knows that it's much more inherently Xena's path that she's found herself on than her own and i think that she started to realize that she needs to answer that for herself that you can't just take even though you can find somebody else's path comfortable for a while over time, eventually, you have to find your own. The fourth season for Gabrielle was all about her search to find her way in this world, um, her re renouncing violence and, and trying to find a way to live in the world and be part of the world without having to take part in Xena's violence. Um, well, that made for the entire fourth, <laughs> fourth season uh, arc emotionally for Gabrielle. I'm searching for answers, too. But how we look for them doesn't matter, as long as we look for them together. 